The majority of paranormal or ghost stories I've read you are anecdotal ones, usually a one-off or incidental type of story. But there are exceptions. Some stories recount an experience that spans over years. Today I'm reading you two stories about two different families who suffered paranormal experiences over many years. From a horror fan's point of view, one could think why suffer for so long? They should have seeked help or done something early on. But if you think about it, even if we noticed something weird going on around us, it is rather more natural that we try to ignore it or rationalize it. Not many can actually admit their home and family are haunted by a paranormal entity and run to a priest or shaman easily. And so, these two families' unfortunate sagas run over many years. So, here are two allegedly true stories about families haunted by ghosts. As always, handpicked, translated and narrated by host. Anthony. Back in 1995, my household included grandma, mom, dad, older sister and second older brother. It was my mom who was the bread earner of the family because dad could not work after a major brain surgery years back. My oldest brother was married and already had two sons by then and as for myself, I was serving in the military at the time. One day near the discharge date, I got a little vacation and came home. Mom was clearly unwell and stayed home the whole three days. I just assumed her chronic high blood pressure must have flared up. To be honest, I was just happy to have her home because ever since Dad's surgery, she was hardly ever home. Back from the vacation, a few usual routine days in the military passed, and one morning, as we folded our mattresses away, the junior soldier brushed my face with his blanket, which made my glasses slip and fall into pieces. That was a nuisance, because I had to go all the way out to the nearby town to get new glasses. But well, accidents happen, don't they? And that evening, my platoon commander passed on the news that my brother called earlier, that my mom was not well. I called home right away. He made it sound light that she went hospital but now back home already and in a stable condition. It couldn't have been really so light a situation, judging by he tried to reach me. But there wasn't much I could do from the army anyway, and just hoped that it was true that mom was okay now. A few days passed. In the morning, we were folding away the mattresses, and again, the same junior soldier brushed me with his blanket, and again that made my glasses fall into pieces. By now, it felt like a bad omen, and the whole day I was nervous what kind of bad thing should manifest. And that evening, platoon leader called me to his office that my brother was online. Mom was in a serious condition, brother said, and that I'd better come to see her before too late. By the time I managed to get an emergency leave from the duty, Mom was back home. Doctors declared there was nothing they could do anymore and recommended to let her have peaceful last days home. It was just a day before Chuseok holiday. Other families would have been in a festive mood with lots of festive food. But my family was practically in mourning. Unlike the hospice nurse's prediction, mom hung on one hour to the next. Her breathing actually got more comfortable into the night, and Chuseok morning came. 
Mom was a devout Buddhist, and we played a cassette tape of the chanting of the Buddhist scriptures. Passing eleven thirty in the morning, Mom's breathing got shallow and laboured again, and with that, my grandma started acting weirdly. Oh my! Water's flooding into the house.、Oh, what to do? What to do? Said she, and rolled her trousers up as if to keep them from getting wet. Grandma was well over eighty then, and we thought the shock of the whole situation probably tipped her over from the sanity. My older brother held tiny grandma in his arms, and flooded with tears. In such tears and commotion, time had it towards noon, and I noticed another weird thing: the tape of the chant that was on went strange, as if the tape had gone stretched. What should have been the sound of rhythmic wooden fish now sounded like ominous giggle of a woman. But we were not in the mind to care about such a thing, Mom. Passed away at twelve five, and by then the chant was playing as it should, again. On the second day of the funeral, family members were all quiet with grief and exhaustion. I was keeping a company to my three-year-old nephew. He was too young to understand the occasion, and I tried to explain. Granny. Is resting there, behind the screen. Indeed, her body was resting behind the screen and shrine set up in traditional fashion. Cranny behind the screen, little nephew said. Yes, she's sleeping there, I said. But nephew pointed each side of the screen and said, "But who are those there and there?" I was confused. There wasn't anybody there, and in the room were just me, the nephew, and my brothers. But there isn't anybody, I said. But nephew insisted and ran to the wall past one end of the screen, calling, "Granny!" I was spooked by his unexpected action. I held him back and said as calmly as I could, "But." Granny isn't there; she's behind the screen, as I said. But Granny was there. Granny and a man went through there. Nephew said, pointing at the wall. I wanted to ask more, but my older brother, the boy's father, told me to stop leading the little kid on. A couple of months later, I discharged from the military and came back home. But the home I returned to was taking a rapid downturn. Grandma wasn't herself, suffering hallucinations in her last few years. My dad also started showing the sign of Alzheimer's. My first brother's business went bankrupt, and my second brother had to get a brain surgery, which rendered him a changed man. And one day, second brother brought up the day Mom passed. I'm not sure if I really saw what I saw, but shortly before Mom passed, I saw a woman outside a window. A young woman. My eyes met hers. Our flat was on the fourth floor, and outside Mom's room was no balcony either. Then, first brother brought up what he heard years back. After Dad had a brain surgery, Grandma consulted a shaman about the waning fortune of the family, and the shaman explained. A female ghost attached herself to Dad from a funeral he attended. Second brother then added, "You know, the Buddhist chant tape we played for Mom. It played funny. 
And you didn't notice it, did you? The sound of the wooden fish turned into what sounded like a giggle of a woman. I replayed the tape after the funeral, and there was nothing wrong with the tape. It left me stunned. I wasn't the only one who heard it then. Years passed without a clear answer to the mysteries. I got married, but could not afford a new place and set our first home in my old family flat. On the first day together there, we slept on the living room floor because the summer night was too hot to sleep on bed. In the middle of the night, my wife woke up with a scream. When I checked on her with a startle, she was all tears. In the dream, a woman glared at me from the balcony door, she said. She turned her head to avoid a scary glare, but the woman slowly opened the balcony door and walked in, she said. I'd never mentioned about the mystery woman to my wife before. To be honest, I hadn't thought about it meantime, but now... My wife would almost all the time mourn and scream when she slept. Most of the times, she didn't remember that she did or what made her so scared. At first, she herself justified it as feeling awkward in the new place, but her nightly scream got worse and worse, and her screaming got so loud that even my neighbors noticed it. It was undeniable that it was to do with the flat because she didn't suffer the night terror when she slept in any other places. In the end, we had to find a new place and just like that, everything became normal. I don't know what that ghost is or what she wants. I can't say if she's to do with all the misfortunes my family went through, but by now, I can't deny there's something there, and I don't want to have anything to do with it. My mom used to run a small cosmetics shop, and the back room to the shop was our family home in my childhood. The crumbling old building was absolutely out of date, and there wasn't even a flushing toilet in the whole building. One had to go through the back door to the courtyard, and there were two previews with tattered wooden doors. They were dirty, smelly, and spooky, no wonder I never saw anybody actually using them. I myself too would go to a neighboring building rather than using them. When I turned nine, we finally moved into a flat. It was just a tiny flat, but I was so happy. The new place was just three minutes walk away from mom's shop, and she kept running the business. One night, I woke up to my parents talking in the living room. I went out to get myself a glass of water. What are you doing, Dad? I asked. Dad seemed visibly startled. Come here. Look at your mom, he said. Mom was sleeping on the sofa. Regardless, Dad talked to her. And she's still here? I couldn't understand what he was doing. Yes. Mom replied, in her sleep. Is that the same girl? Dad carried on. Yes. Mom's voice was faint, but clearly responding to Dad's questions. Later I learned Mom saw a same bob-cut-haired woman in her dream repeatedly for some time by then. The fact that she talked in her sleep, she didn't seem to remember, though. I found it spooky, but nothing much more happened and got used to it. 
So much so I even once asked sleeping mom, Is she pretty? Well, I was a teenage boy by then, you know. And then, since when? Mom started closing her shop earlier and earlier. The shop was by the town's market, and with a fair bit of foot traffic continuing into late nights, she used to come back home about midnight. But since when she came back home half past eleven, then eleven, and then again half past ten, etc. I didn't give much thought though, and was just glad to have her home earlier. Then, one summer evening, I got a call from mom to come to a shop and help her closing. Mom usually had small stands of toilet rolls, soaps, and other rather weighty stuffs outside the shop, and I often helped her to bring them in before closing. But I think that was the first time she asked me to give her a hand directly. By the time I got to the shop, the stands outside were already cleared. And all one had to do was turning the lights off. I asked Mom why she called me when everything was already done. I still remember her face and voice when she replied, "I'm too scared to go into the room." The room she meant was the back room where my family used to live in. Since we moved into the flat, the room became a storage. Its entrance from the shop was blocked to put more shelves, so now one had to go around the courtyard and use the back door to get there. But why should she be scared to get into the room where we used to live for years? Why, Mom? Did you see a ghost there or what? I teased. But her anxious face didn't react to my joke at all. And just told me to go and turn off the light in the room. I'd just add, my mom is usually the most chilled-out lady I know. She hardly ever works herself up, and I've never seen her losing temper to this day. Yet that evening, she was all nerves. So I went around the courtyard and entered the storage room. The light there was off already. And strangely, it felt odd and chilling there, despite the summer weather outside and the fact I used to live in that very room. I didn't want to hang in there any longer than necessary, so I quickly locked up, came around to the shop, and draw the front shutter down. The light was off already in the storage, by the way, I said to Mom. Are you sure? Did you turn it off or? Was it off already? Mom's response was still tense. She insisted the light couldn't have been off. She was there last to take her dinner out of the little fridge there and left the light on. But I just simply thought she must be mistaken and didn't think too much of it. Since then on, she always called me or Dad in to close the shop. Even during the day, she seemed visibly uncomfortable to stay in the shop by herself. Fortunately, she was friends with many other owners of the shops in the market, and she often had one of them over there and chat and have coffee. And one day, I came back from school, and found Mom already back home and sleeping. I just assumed she was unwell and couldn't work that day. Dad told me to go and lock up the shop. I found the shutter of the shop half down and the light emitting from the back of the shelves. That meant the light in the storage room was still on. So around the courtyard I went and into the shop, but I could not move. There was something in the air, something sinister. In the stillness of the back room, it felt like I was being watched from every corner. I could not dare to turn off the light and face the darkness there. 
In the end, I just left it on and came out of the room, looking down on the floor all the time. Later, I learned earlier that day one of Mom's friends from the market found Mom fainted in the back room, and that was why she was home early. Not long after, Mom declared to the family that she couldn't possibly run the shop any longer. Dad asked what was wrong, and Mom, to our surprise, bursted into tears. The story she told us when she calmed down wasn't what we could have imagined. A few days prior, Mom was sweeping the front of the shop as her morning routine was. She looked inside the shop unwittingly and saw, at her usual spot behind the glass showcase, a woman standing, in white and with a very long hair. When she took a second look, startled, the woman wasn't there any more. She wasn't sure if she really saw what she saw, but it was enough to bother her to feel uncomfortable to be in the shop. And indeed. She didn't open the shop for about a week afterwards. She eventually opened the shop again, but she was clearly nerves. She is Catholic, but she never really displayed her faith openly, not to brush against the clients with the different religions. But now she had a cross, a statue of Maria, and a bottle of holy water in the shop, and didn't let go of her rosary from her hand all day long. And one very hot and muggy day, I came over to the shop to help Mom close in the shop. By then, she would close usually around ten, but that evening she had her friends, fellow shop owners in the market, with her. And you know, when these ladies once start chatting, they can just carry on, and carry on they did that evening, well past midnight. I, who had to hang around waiting for their endless conversation, finally let up. Was pretty pissed. I turned off the light of the shop and was lowering the shutter the half way, when Mom reminded me that we might have forgot to turn off the air conditioning. I had a little pissy fit, but what could I do but sneak into the pitch dark shop again? Indeed, the air conditioning was running. I could not see anything, but was so familiar with the space that it wasn't too difficult to find the remote from the usual spot. But when I turned towards the air conditioner to turn it off, I saw a glowing red face looking back at me on the top of the air conditioner. No body, but just a head. I was frozen, stuck, could not even breath, let alone scream. Adult! It shouted with a thunderous voice, and the next thing I remember was I woke up at home. Mom didn't hear the shout, but just found me passed out inside. Of course, my account about the red face totally creeped Mom out, and she declared once again she couldn't possibly run the shop again. Now that the situation got so serious, my grandma also learned what was going on with Mom's shop. Unlike Mom, who is Catholic, Grandma was a devout Buddhist. There was a close friend and a fellow Buddhist to Grandma, whom Grandma called Madame Bodhisattva. At the time, I thought she must be a female monk, but later I learned Bodhisattva was just a way for Buddhists to politely address each other. I don't know what her background was, but indeed she didn't shave her head or dressed like a monk. I had seen her a few times before, and I remember she always gave off such a strong presence that I almost felt scared of her. Anyway, Grandma passed on the story to her friend, and she agreed to come and have a look. Upon arrival, Madame Bodhisattva asked for a couple of white towels. 
she instructed the mom and grandma not to enter whatever they might get to hear and knocked on the door before she entered the shop. We watched from the outside through the show window. Madame Bodhisattva first took some time to look at the spot where mom said she saw the woman in white, and then took the back door to enter the storage room. She didn't come out over two hours. We could just wait anxiously as we were told not to come in no matter what. When she finally came out, her face looked purple and she was soaked with sweat. She didn't explain anything until we came back to our flat. She opened with a saying that we should sell the shop discreetly as soon as possible. Apparently, there were two ghosts, that of a woman and a man. The female ghost was a wandering spirit, while the male ghost had been there for a long time, rooted in the creepy old privy I mentioned at the beginning. Madame Bodhisattva asked mom if there wasn't anything else in the courtyard apart from the privies. I forgot all about it, but mom remembered we used to have a shed as a storage space. Before the back room turned to a storage, dad built a wooden shed to store goods for the shop. So the ghost of Privy considered the shed as his home. When dad got rid of it as we moved into our flat, he took it as his home destroyed and took up our back room, now the storage room, as his new home instead. Madame Bodhisattva managed to send the female ghost away as she was anyway a wandering soul, but the male ghost only scoffed at her effort to persuade him. He was not only firmly rooted in the spot, but also strong enough to cause a harm to us. To get rid of him, it would require a big ritual led by a professional shaman, and that was not only costly and not what mom would have agreed to, but also would have created a bad reputation about the property. All the good luck with the business in the shop was anyway spent, she explained, and we'd be better with selling it off. Having suffered enough of ghosts already, mom eventually took the advice. She sold off the shop she'd been running over a decade and started a new business. Fortunately, she didn't suffer any more weird incidents to this day. But there is still one more thing. The bobcut haired girl from my mom's dream. Madame Bodhisattva also explained about it. After talking about the shop, she suddenly went into the kitchen and then to the little balcony to the kitchen. Tell your husband to throw it away. It's a bit too heavy for me to handle, she said as she came back from the kitchen. Apparently, she saw another female ghost peeping around in the flat. It was a benign soul, dressed neatly and behaved herself. Mom asked if that was a girl with a bobcut hair and dressed in such and such clothes, and Madame Bodhisattva confirmed it all. She came along with a camp bed my dad had picked up from a dumpster. When it was thrown out again, Mom didn't have a dream about her again, and she never talked in her sleep again either. Hi, it's Anthony here, and thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. Even though I run basically a horror story channel, I'm more a skeptic. So even if such a bizarre phenomenon should manifest around me and my family, I don't think I'll readily recognize the nature of them and seek a paranormal solution. What would you have done if you and your family were in the situation as in today's stories? But let us pray that such doesn't happen to us. If you enjoyed my work, please give it a thumbs up and a comment, and please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. I bring you various bizarre, paranormal, or amusing stories straight from Korean web, sometimes with some footnotes about its cultural background. 
If you are interested in Korean culture or just a fan of spooky bedtime stories, you'll enjoy it here. If you'd support me more directly, I also have a Buy Me A Coffee account. The link's in the description. Buy Me A Coffee supporters enjoy an early access to my new content. Thank you. Until next Sunday, stay safe and take care.